Because of the history of Golden Guardians, people write us off instantly. Almost every one of our playoff matches this year, not a single person expected us to win. Dixie! Oh my god! Oh, Dixie trips one, he flashes back, he's still alive! Golden Guardians changing the tide of what everyone believes that they can do. I'm sure everyone knows, but Sven calling Golden Guardians a fraud ever since we lost to them. I thought that they couldn't win, but they've really been surprising me. 300 HP, he might just die here with the very start. He holds on a second longer, but sticks a guns him down. FlyQuest try to fight back, but Prince is the victim of Regicide. Golden Guardians are shining bright. Dixie's actually ready to turn this one back around. Did they forget what champion he's playing? The best season in the history of the organization. The biggest thing Cloud9 has going for them is just their momentum. They won last year. If we can kind of slow them down, we have a really good shot. Cloud9, the most dominant team in the LCS, have won. I just want to keep winning. I want to prove that I'm the best. It's a 2v2. Fudge is low. Tenacity needs a little bit more damage. It's Blabber from Spirit, but he won't be able to find it. Now they turn back on the Blabber. A quadra kill him in a Blabber. Yeah, it's going to feel good smashing another team in the finals 3 0. And I'm going to win my fourth. Berserker firing, 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 firing. Penta kill. For me, it's been seven years since I was able to play on the finals. I think at the end of the day, the reason we compete is for the moments like this, where we're able to step on a stage in front of thousands of people and prove ourselves. The follow from Spica was oh. nice enough, but it wasn't. Golden Guardian turned it around. All that glitters is gold. What a year for the Golden Guardians. It would be the first time in Golden Guardians history that they had ever won. The magic's in the air, you know? It's not quite fully recaptured because the job's not finished. The magic is in the air. The players are in their seats and the finals have arrived. Welcome to the last best of five here in spring 2023 for the LCS. I'm Captain Flowers once again, joined by Kobe and Azael, and this is the bout between Cloud9 and the Golden Guardians to crown our LCS champion. So excited for this to, ha to, to break out here. Golden Guardians are the underdogs of the LCS. They squeaked into playoffs at six place and they have had upset after upset victory to get them here to the finals but going against cloud nine the behemoth the titan of the lcs it is a daunting task i mean almost everyone's going to be predicting cloud nine but that is nothing new for golden guardians people have been predicting against them all the way from regular season all through playoffs this team has been defying expectations and we're going to find out if they can do that again here today now, the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is yesterday, even in the games that Golden Guardians lost, they were able to get out to early advantages. Cloud9, we also know, is a team that wants to be creative. They want to be aggressive early on in the game. So I want to see both of these drafts go in and go hard. No Victor, no Azir, <laughs> no Zeri. Give me some champs with some meat on their bones. Well, already Cloud9 are paying respect to River. River had such a massive performance yesterday, yeah. smurfing on the jar. Marvin. They ban his target pick here, uh, and it's a dual ban now as who he also played it in the support role. And I'm super interested to see, you know, what Blabber's approach to this series is going to be because River really was prioritizing super early junglers. There was high prio on the Elise. There was the Jarvan as well. You know, is Blabber going to try to match fire with fire, or is he going to play more that farming style, just try to be looking more for the counter ganks? Well, we've got the Vi, Jarvan, Caitlyn, Annie, Jace, and Varus banned out in the first half of the draft here. Cloud9 are on blue side. Remember, blue had four out of five wins yesterday in that series. And C9, they're going to first pick the Maokai for Black. Zeri is still up and available here. Pretty high priority, especially with the Vi being banned as the point and click to usually take it down. We do have to remember, though, Berserker you know, is willing to bring out picks like the Draven, right? So yes. is Golden Guardians going to have the confidence to do it? Yes. They are going to slap it down right here. 
And I wouldn't be shocked to see Berserker go to something aggressive. You know, Varus is off the table. They could look for a Caitlyn Lux, that type of angle, but they can also super hard and go for something like a Draven right off the gates. One of the things that I'm a little bit cautious of for the Zeri pick for Golden Guardians, Zeri's best friends are enchanters. And who he is a player that we love to see on playmakers, on engaged supports, on champions where his shot calling and his go button instincts can lead the team to a victory. So I'm curious how Golden Guardians are going to handle the pairing. They'll draft the Cassante next to the Zeri here in that first rotation as Cloud9 respond to the scaling AD carry with one of their own. Aphelios locked in for Berserk. I assume it's gonna be the Thresh partner locked in with it, but they could do a kind of a takeaway and steal the Lulu and, and buff him up with the Lulu and then deny the Lulu Zeri combination if they really wanted to. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see exactly where they want to go. Zven obviously, you know, is pretty flexible. When we had the support champion pools compared earlier on, it was Huhi who had played so many more champions. Right. Fresh being hovered with a couple seconds left, though, does make sense. Really strong pairing here for the Aphelios. Gives you that mobility that you lack with that Lantern. Try to keep them safe. Uh, and also really great gang setup between the Gravitum Root and that Thresh Hook. You can Lantern in a jungler. You can really look to make those aggressive plays. Golden Guardians, they have to pick either support or jungler here. You would think they would not want to have both those solo laners here in the first half. Sejuani, here's a champion that was banned all day long yesterday. The massive tank, the main meatball in the jungle, locked in for River and the Golden Guardians. And I really like this because not only is the Cassante a flex for the Golden Guardians, but Gori also likes playing other melee mid laners too. And Sejuani really benefits from having two melee solo lanes to be able to play off of. Keep your opponents guessing which one you're going to gank. You know, they could combine it with stuff like a Yone or an Akali yeah. as we get deeper into the draft. I would really not be surprised, though, to see Cassante just go mid and Licorice, you know, on red side, look for fifth pick, counter pick top, play yeah. something like a Fiora, like an Aurelia, like an Olaf, you know, one of those melee pairings to stack up the passive there with that Sejuani that has been his bread and butter throughout playoffs. And if we're talking about Licorice, yesterday he managed to pass the test of the eternal brick wall that is impact in the top lane, the guy who can always play weak side, the guy who can play whatever the team needs. Today, he's up against Fudge, who is much more of an in-your-face type of player. So if Licorice is willing to throw down the gauntlet on these carry versus carry types of matchups or go for a counter pick, you know Fudge isn't going to take it lying down. Gragas banned away, Blitzcrank banned away by C9. I like that protection ban for the bottom lane here. Blitzcrank often picked into the Thrash as the counter to pull in, try and get those kills. Protecting a little bit there for Berserker and Sven. Ban phases against Golden Guardians end up looking so much more unique than other ban phases yeah. just because of what the Golden Guardians are willing to play. Jarvan, Blitzcrank, these are not commonly grayed out champion portraits. Yeah, and it's not just, you know, top lane and jungle for them as well. Who he has played so many more supports than other support players in the league thus far. You know, pulling out the Rel, pulling out the support, Jarvan, the Amumu back as well. So many different engage angles, but already Golden Guardians very heavy on engage. So they are going to ban out the Lulu. It's interesting because I, I was wondering if they were going to just kind of throw down that gauntlet and say, Golden Guardians needs you to play engage, so we'll leave the Lulu up. They do elect to ban it. That is obviously the most common pairing with the Zeri. There are still other enchanter options if you want to go that route, but, you know, Golden Guardians does just seem to function better when who he is playing a more aggressive champion, when he can have that go button and we'll see if they have that same read well it looks like they do rakan locked in for who he for that playmaking and engage power and rakan is the go button this is one of the most highly priced supports in all of drafting right now so be able to get that this late with zeri is pretty big for the golden guardians the speed that you can initiate with that plus the sejuani <laughs> is going to be very very quick they're just hovering what they think that, that Licorice is going to play. I think that's what, what this is right here. But we'll see if Playing there's going to be any game. sort of uh, mix up, if they want to lock it in themselves. And they are. Never mind. No mind games. It's all champion select, baby. This, this is actually pretty interesting. You know, you, you, you have to assume that it is going top lane. But theoretically, Blabber could be playing. It could be Maokai top. I think it's a very low chance. Um, but Blabber obviously very well known for his Olaf. And if they lock Zillion, I would actually think, you know, there's a little bit more of a chance, but definitely assuming that it would be a top Olaf. Okay, they're gonna lock in the Orianna for MS instead. We still have to see maybe there's the chance of the flex between Olaf and really Maokai low chance, and top though. and jungle. I would put it very low as well. Yeah. But I do like seeing Ooh, that he. Olaf that we're thinking of just <laughs> potentially being like that. But over on the other side, this is who he's longtime hover. He has a history with Aurelia and Soul back when he was a mid laner. Yeah, I got tears in my eyes when Dash introduced him as the voice of the faithful there, who he given a shout out to CLG. 
on the biggest stage, and they go with the cannon here again for Licorice. Watch those flanks. I will say Maokai is one of the best at marking a cannon for team yeah. fights. Really, really big uh, and long zone control for Maokai to be able to keep these cannon players out. So that makes Licorice's job a little bit more difficult in this game, trying to have a big impact. Same with the Rakan. You know, those are two champions that want to come from unexpected angles, and having those saplings, being able to throw them in all the brushes makes it very difficult to kind of find that, that unexpected approach. Uh, but it is going to be Olaf top here for Fudge. I love that he's just throwing down the gauntlet with a carry matchup right from the get-go. He blinds this. Uh, the answer of Cannon is strong here, but it's going to be, I think, a tough 2v2 for Golden Guardians to win against that Maokai as well as uh, Fudge here. You know, if you get that lockdown onto the Cannon, Maokai is going to hold you in place. The Olaf's going to slap you down, and that is going to be very, very terrifying if they can get Fudge ahead, because especially the pairing with the Orianna just makes that Olaf even stronger, gives you more life in that late game. I'm ready for it, man. We've got the throwdown in top lane immediately. We've got the scaling AD carries in the bottom side, making sure both teams make it into the end game, into the late game. I got my eye on these junglers in particular to see who gets on the rip first and who dominates in game one. Let's do it, it's time for game number one of the LCS Spring Finals in 2023. C9 in the blue, Golden Guardians in the red. They took down FlyQuest yesterday in a full five game series, and now they gotta try to take down C9 for their first ever possible title here today. Yeah, their path through the playoffs has been a true underdog story, and now, against Cloud9, the kings of the LCS, is the Golden Guardian's chance to truly shock the world. Fudge comes down the bot lane, they're expecting that lane ward, they give that last hit to Fudge, and he gets the experience, so he's gonna get level two off that first wave. Uh, this is really nice for that Olaf when you are playing these aggressive matchups. I would not be surprised to see him try to really get in the face of Licorice. We'll see if he wants to be playing beyond that minion wave. Yeah, we saw Licorice abusing it earlier yesterday getting in front of the minion wave denying experience there is a ward up here protecting behind red buff but looks like they're going to go for the late invade raptor spawns now labyrinth fudge walking in but over a ward mns right behind them you can see licorice still hanging around that tri brush seeing if he needs to reinforce his own jungler river does get the smite down on the large chicken but because he can't secure the entire camp he's still only level one while wow, bottom side, Sven eating some damage here as Huhi and Stixe drop the ignite. Stixe just goes in, and Sven goes down. Golden Guardians first blood. The Golden Guardians bottom lane take first blood, and they Whoa. make it look so easy. And they're actually doing a lane swap here. MNS sent up to deal with this cannon. Fudge does not want to be in that matchup, so Fudge's lane swap to mid. You'll remember he actually played a split mid lane, but a massive start for Golden Guardians, forcing the flash off MNS, who's playing top, getting that kill and the flash off Sven as well, is an incredible, incredible start. It's a massive wake up call to Cloud9. Golden Guardians are coming in hot off of yesterday, and Cloud9 have to have something to say about it. Well, Fudge definitely does. Pops the ghost early, forces the flash out of Gori's Cassante in mid. Now, one of the things, I mean, this is going to be an, an easier matchup, playing this melee versus melee matchup instead of playing against that cannon. But the difficulty becomes you're playing in mid lane. It's not this long lane where you can chase people down as easily. We can go back to this level one here. Sven stepping forward is starting play, but he actually misses the play. The back step from Hui and Stixie was perfect. They dodge out on that slow, and they realize without the slow on us, we can just straight up chase him down. Flashing in and getting that kill, and Hui has been loving his time here in North Carolina. Every time they get a kill, he's just laughing it up. Team has been playing with confidence, and this is another example of it. When you're doing the lane swap like this and having MS lane topside so you can have the Olaf uh, into the Cassante, then you have to be more careful. Ooh, Fudge forced to flash there as Golden Guardians collapse with jungler and support. Cloud9 now no summoner spells on this mid lane Olaf. Yeah, that is big, being able to get that flash down because Gory was down a flash, so if he had to actually overextend pushing out a wave, there is a possibility that Fudge could have looked for that all in. Much more difficult without the summoner, but 
you know, you're talking about that lane swap, Kobe, and it's it's one of those things where when you don't play this lane, it's not like you know the Kennen versus Orianna matchup. You're not necessarily expecting it. He's just approaching from a weird angle there, and Licorice takes full advantage. So Golden Guardians playing with extreme confidence, and after their amazing early games yesterday, they're picking up right where they left off. And River is on this ward, so MNS. But he's got no flash. Yeah, Licorice just immediately flashes on top of him to get the stun. MNS is going to be killed, and Golden Guardians start off 2-0. MNS playing way too far up, way too confident. He had already gotten the wave to a position where it was going to crash, but he walks up on Licorice there. Licorice had forced the flash at level one, just goes in with his own flash to actually get that initial stun. And then River comes in with the Q flash to follow. That CC was there, beautifully played by Golden Guardians. The Golden Guardians are just picking up where they left off yesterday here and the pace of the game being pushed expertly. Golden Guardians early game can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with C9 and punish them as they tried to avoid the matchups they didn't want with this lane swap. Back in mid, Gory and Fudge just trading back and forth a little bit. Again, both of them are melee, both can scrap, but the size of the lane being shorter, like you were talking about, Isaac, it means that you can't really run the other guy down super effectively. Yeah, it's much more difficult unless they're super overextended. You know, and that is one of the strengths of Olaf, is that he bounces the wave, it's pushing out, and then you have this long top lane where they can look for it. And MNS, he is likely dead again. Uh, just gonna be waiting on cooldowns. Now they're gonna go. There's River with the engage, W2. There's the E follow up for the stun. They wanna give the money to River and Golden Guardians get number three. You lane swap the vulnerable Orianna up to the top side, not on River's watch. He will punish you over and over again. And Golden Guardians, they're going to get even more of this. There's no cannon minion here, so the minions are just dying to the tower. Licorice chunks away at this turret plate, and he's going to leave them to die in favor of the tempo for a reset. That was that was 10 minions there that actually do die to that. So that's a lot of gold lost from MNS. There's no TP on Fudge. So there's no one actually cover on a death there for that top lane wave. They're just losing so much here. And Golden not, Guardians are looking incredible. Not just gold, EXP too. MNS just now hitting level five as bottom side, Blabber's walking through with a sweeper, looking for any way to get some of this momentum back, but Stixay and Huhi are backing off. And I actually love the restraint that Licorice shows there. He does not overstay and greed for the turret plate. He yeah. takes the big win for what it is and goes back to get his recall for his blasting wand. Huhi, knock up on Berserker there. These guys in Golden Guardian's bottom lane are still doing such a good job sidestepping away from Sven's skill shots. Rivers over the wall here, but he is a level down compared to Blabber. He's also only got about half HP. Fudge and Gory both looking to rotate over into the fight, but Golden Guardians need to be careful they don't overextend with lower health bars and to the back away. Yeah, I think they really just wanted to fight to kill that pink ward. Blabber was trying hard to defend it, and that's why Sven moved over as well, but weren't able to quite make it happen. But just have to be a little bit careful here. If Cassante can get behind you, can scoop you in. And now it's Licorice at six. Doesn't have flash, so MNS should be able to walk this out. But it is very, very scary if they get back up there again. Free MNS hitting six. Kenny Nault will kill you for sure if they have a lockdown. Yeah. Cloud Nine, though, are going to be able to pick up this first Ocean Dragon. And that does help a lot with early lane phase. This is one of the most impactful first dragons to be able to get. And you can see the one advantage that Blabber has gotten you. You've talked about the XP. He has been farming these additional camps. He's known for this, really prioritizes the farming. River is kind of on the other end of the spectrum where he's often down in farm, but really prioritizes putting pressure on those lanes, even when he's playing something like the Sejuani right. that is not as much known as an early ganker. Well, Golden Guardians are almost 2,000 gold ahead here, seven minutes in. Remember that in yesterday's series, early Drake control was a priority in the majority of the games. Not quite as early here in this one. A lot of those first Drakes yesterday were around six minutes. This one is seven, but it's still early enough that the second Drake will still have no unleashed teleports. So we'll see how the teams want to fight about that moving forward as Golden Guardians want to keep this momentum going. And they're making a lane swap here, switching the lanes back to normal preemptively ahead of the Rift Herald. Who he coming out on support roam timer to make sure they can push out mid, get that wave control, and see about this objective. Here comes River. Golden Guardians have a level six jungler. They definitely have ideas for this Rift Herald. They keep Stixa on bottom side though. They have a level six jungler, but they also only have a small amount of time, about 45 seconds or so left on Licorice's flash. That could be a huge mechanism if Golden Guardians want a team fight. It's just gonna be a 3v3 topside. 
Sixit was actually hiding in the tri brush down by bot lane, waited till that wave came in. So with no dive being set up, now you can see the C9 bot lane is actually moving up, but will it be too late? Because this is getting low. Blabber decided he already wanted to go in and try to fight, but Gory's ready to go all out. Licorice and Blabber both gonna die side by side as Licorice is taken out by Fudge, but it's the Herald taken out by Golden Guardians. The eyeball is stuck on the floor. They can't do anything about it, but now Sven's been caught again. This Thresh is never in the right spot this game. Now he's got to get back. Golden Guardians, they may have taken the objective, but they can't claim the reward. I, I still think it is a good play there, but you know, they, they section out Blabber. Gory hits him with the Cassante ultimate. They take the jungler away. They ensure that they can get, it's now 300 gold just for killing the actual Rift Herald. So you get basically half the value, even a little bit more from actually just killing it. And then one for one trade as far as the kills go, plus the extra splat, flash off of Ben. Berserker's gonna get dope here. Stixe goes in, and Berserker's dead. Golden Guardians, this bot lane, the 2v2 is bloodthirsty. And the turret play money for Stixe as well afterwards. He is getting rich. The Golden Guardians win condition is in full swing here. Coming out in game number one really heavy. I mean, they're winning everywhere right now. Looking so good. You can see Licorice is already preparing for a potential side lane matchup against Fudge. Has the early Swifties. We saw this actually showcased by Impact as well. It's incredibly yes, effective against that Olaf. Uh, makes it very difficult for him to close the gap. And now MNS taking the bat into this trade. Has really been getting punished up here on this top side. Love how much confidence Golden Guardians are playing with. They keep setting up their own plays before Cloud9 are there to react, always with a game plan as well. Here comes Blabber, though, looking towards mid if uh, Gory gets a little bit too aggressive. Not too easy to make a play on Cassante, however, and Gory is fine just playing this one out passively, not taking unnecessary risks. Under two minutes until that next Drake spawns. Remember, there won't be any Unleashed TPs, so setup is even more important. I mean, Gory's playing a tank, and his his map is winning, right? His top lane is winning, his bot lane is heavily winning. It's plus 20 CS and the kill and the plate on 6A. So he doesn't need to take any risks. It's Fudge that really has that pressure on him. And I think it's intelligent to sit back, relax, farm it up, and wait for the Zeri to do her thing. Well, Stixay definitely has things in order to get to that point as Licorice unleashes the slicing Maelstrom going for the solo kill on m &S. Meanwhile, Fudge feeling that pressure, trying to make something happen. He died to the play from Golden Guardians, and Gory gets his second kill. Yeah, that's going to be a kill and another turret plate. More gold for the Golden Guardians a minute ahead of the Dragon, so there will be enough time for Fudge to respawn for that, but they get to run the map. It's a rotation now down from mid lane towards this bottom lane again. And Berserker has the flash. Berserker, he's getting away. But what about Sven? What about Berserker now? He's pulled the safety. Golden Guardian still looking to finish this dive. River chases Sven. The W2 connects. He needs a little bit more damage. The Arctic Assault is there. River nearly with enough. One last auto attack takes him down. The Golden Guardians. It got sketchy, but they got it done. 3-0 pick predictions be damned. Golden Guardians are stomping Cloud9 in game number one. They're closing in a 5,000 gold lead here. We are not even at 12 minutes into the game. They get another plate in bot. They get two plates in mid, actually, with the Demolish proc as well, I believe. They are crushing it here. The Golden Gods in the early game yet again. Let's see if they can transfer this down to the Dragon. They've got Recall off now for Licorice. Remember, he won't have his Kennen ultimate, though, because he just used it for that exchange. Now, the big thing I've got my eyes on for Golden Guardians. Yes, they have an impressive lead. They've had an awesome early game. The same thing happened in game number one yesterday, and then some sloppy mid-game fights, some questionable calls allowed FlyQuest back in. This game, I want to see him keep it clean. As Blabber fires off the ult, but Gory's going to lead the charge to the Golden Guardians. Fudge is in the front, but nobody's able to deal damage while he blocks there and is immune with the Ragnarok. Now the ult he's worn away, and Olaf has a much harder time fighting in the team fights. Licorice has his flash, but the ult he's not ready just yet. Golden Guardians want this Kinnon to make an entrance. Stick say on the Zeri. Keep your eyes on him. He's got the opportunity to pop off if they set him up. They throw out River's ulti. They land on Sven. It's going to be stolen as River gets it. And Golden Guardians pick up a kill. One kill, one Drake. No problem for Golden Guardian. He does it again. River doesn't miss the W2 swing on Sejuani combined with the smite there. Really good timing from River. They get the objective. They're going to get more turret plates. And they had this really big window that they had to avoid. Gory did not have his ultimates. 
on Cassante there, so it was a little bit dangerous for them, and they had him go recall back, fill up at the fountain, and just go for the smite fight and still won it. And I love that Golden Guardians doesn't overchase there. They don't overcommit. They get the dragon, they get that kill, they just back it up because they're winning so hard on tempo. They can go straight mid, start forming plates, go top, start pushing in those waves, and they're getting so much. Now Gory's under pressure though. Berserker and Sven. 2v1, Berserker's got the red and white, and Gory can't fight. Shut down to Cloud9's AD carry. That is exactly what Cloud9 fans want to see. Berserker getting the shutdown money here on the Avelios. He is the big carry threat for this squad. Turret plating falls, and the gold lead sits just shy of 5,000 in the favor of the Golden Guardians. We'll take another look back at this team fight, which did get a little crazy here in the middle part. So they just had the recall there from Gori, so Cassante is coming over from the tower because it's three unleashed teleport, and it's just down to a smite fight. River nails it, and then they're able to lock up Blabber inside the dragon pit to get a kill on top of the stolen objective. Adding more insult to injury as far as stealing the smite and then taking the jungler's life. I mean, River is just playing incredible so far this game. Has been everywhere across the map here. Seven out of nine kill participation. This guy has really been making it happen. He was such a big part of their series win yesterday as well. Him and Gory were really unstoppable, it felt like, against Blackwest, and they're picking it up right here. There's the first turret of the game. Golden Guardians take it down, and they're gonna get the victory across the map as well, taking the second Rift Herald of the game. This time, they're gonna get the eye, too, and you would expect that to mean another turret. Meanwhile, Gory, he's gonna get a third prize for the Golden Guardians. They're getting the turret bottom, they're getting the Herald in top, they're getting the turret in mid. The whole Rift is coming up gold, and Sven is going down. Gory gets the 10th kill of the game for the Golden Guardians. It's gold versus gray because Cloud9 are back in the fountain again. Golden Guardians are making it look easy. They heard Cloud9 talking smack and didn't like it. Golden Guardians have the Midas touch in game number one. Literally everything they look at just turns into gold for them. The entire map evaporating. And this is an awesome start for a team that's coming into a game where they're looked at as such underdogs. Get that momentum going early. Get yourself in a good mindset to keep it on as Imanet has to get away from Gory. Nice sidestep there on the Q3 so he doesn't get knocked back. But Golden Guardians are so far ahead. Cloud9 has to dig in, defend, and pray for a mistake. Yeah, it's going to be a long road back if C9 were able to get back into it. Yeah, Fudge is really the only one who has about as much gold as his counterpart. He does have a, a decent CS advantage, and he's going to have to try to get something done, but it's going to be so incredibly difficult, because if you go in on that solo mission as the Olaf, you're just going to get burst down. Yeah, Cloud9 got to start targeting these bounties on people's heads. They got the one initially off of Gory, but there are three more because of how well Golden Guardians are doing. Start collecting those, hopefully onto Berserker for their sakes, to be able to have some sort of fighting chance to cut down on the Golden Guardian's front line. River's gonna just drop this Eye of the Herald in top lane. This is the last remaining tier one turret for cloud Nine side. Golden Guardians will knock that one down right now, and then Licorice can try to escort this a little bit further if he wants to attempt the charge on the Tier 2. He's still got his support and his jungler right next to him. If Fudge wants to try to block this, he's going to have to 1v3. And, and he has no idea what's happening, right? You can see on the minimap, there's no vision on that side, so Fudge has got to play back. He doesn't know if the entire team was waiting there to dive him. He can't actually walk up and just hit that Herald, so they're going to take the Tier 2 as well. Golden Guardians are just stomping this game. It's another turret going their way. Yeah, they should definitely reset now to be able to get back for Dragon. Uh, if you're this far ahead, they shouldn't allow Cloud9 any easy counter objectives here. They're going to keep Licorice top, though, even with his teleport still on cooldown, just to keep it the pressure, push one more wave. And I always feel like when you're behind in the game and you see Mountain Soul is the one for the game, it is really disheartening because yeah. really the way you can come back is by getting these picks, is by getting a burst kill, trying to knock down someone like that Zeri instantly at the start of the fight. But if Golden Guardians are able to secure that soul, if they can continue working towards it, it's going to become a near impossible job for Cloud9. We're already so far down. Yeah, I think the difficult part is, is how do you fight these team fights because Golden Guardians are so well structured with a strong front line, with big AOE coverage from Kennen, all to make space for Zeri, one of the, the most mobile and highest carry potential AD carry champions we have in the game now. 
6A with the safety of his shield bow, double summoner spells, and no death so far, should be able to follow up. Man, it's such a difficult game state for Cloud9, and I think they're probably as surprised as anybody is. They were coming into this off of a hot streak. They're coming into this heavy favorites. You look back at the desk, it's three 3-0 three predictions, and then Raz going a little wild with the pantomiming, <laughs> but it seems like Raz might have been the one who was onto something here, because Golden Guardians came to play. Absolutely, and, and it really went off the rails right at level one, because it's MNS losing his flash in the lane swap. It's Zven dying in the bot lane, and it's Golden Guardians just playing with incredible confidence here. Well, Cloud9, you're not the only ones. 100 Thieves, they were surprised <laughs> when they met the Golden Guardians. Evil Geniuses, they were surprised when they met the Golden Guardians. And so are we here today. FlyQuest seemed pretty surprised. Honestly, you would, you would think that people would start to expect the Golden Guardians at a certain point. This squad has had an incredible run through playoffs so far. Seven and a half thousand gold up here in this first game of the finals. We are just about at the 20-minute mark, 30 seconds to go until Baron shows up on the Rift. And Golden Guardians, you can already see, they're trying to choke the vision away from Cloud9. So I think for Cloud9, really your only shot is just funnel all gold into Berserker, try to get him to a good item spike, and pray that you can have a really good fight. That he can get one of those massive fights, either you know red-white kiting back and doing a lot of damage, or get one of those massive Infernum ultimates where you're aoing a -ing, a -ing down a stacked up team. It kind of feels like it has to be something like that because otherwise it's going to be just way too hard. There's so much protection for 6A, and he's really all the damage they need. I also really like just, if you know they're going to go for Baron, they are so far ahead, and you see them on a couple of wards here, send multiple people to try and pick off the split pusher. Licorice is doing a good job, though. You can see now he is just disappeared from the map, backing so far away on the cannon. They he doesn't even want to let them have that chance. Splabber could yellow it. Splabber's going to fire off the ulti. Golden Guardians are ready to go. Who he's coming around from behind. He finds the Berserker, throws him up into the air. Licorice is ready for the follow-up, but he can't get the valuable target. Licorice dies, and Berserker takes the kill. Golden Guardians continue pressing forward as Sven eats bullets from Stick Day. Evanes and Sven have been traded for Licorice and Huhi, and even two for two. That's actually really good for Cloud9 to get an even trade and one of the kills going over to Berserker here. That is definitely the best that they could have hoped for. They also got the teleport down on the cannon and the flash down on the cannon as well. Cloud9, they're not done yet. Even with the Golden Guardians have such a big, big early lead. They do teleport right back out to it though. Yeah, Golden Guardians aren't done yet either. I mean, Stixe is, is full health. He's right back to it. Berserker still hasn't actually been able to base. Blabber's running here. Blabber, there's, there's no shot. This is gone. Yeah, Blabber does not have a flash. He does not have his ultimate. The Baron is falling rapidly. But not rapidly enough. Blabber's still looking for maybe a chance, but Gory is way too tanky. It's very easy for him to keep everybody else away. Cloud9 coming in. Too little, too late. Blabber leading the charge. Gory's still here in the front line, tanking up a lot. Golden Guardians will at least lose their mid, and Berserker gets another shutdown. That's really good for Cloud9 because every death while you have Baron on Golden Guardians is going to buy Cloud9 another 30 seconds. Golden Guardians can't overextend, push too heavily with the Baron. So they're stalling it out a little bit, but that was a really good restart by Golden Guardians. Yeah. And Gory sacrifices himself. Good death there. Sacrifice, keep Blabber out. Make sure there's no flip. Golden Guardians, they are on the path to victory here in game number one. It was an even trading kills, you know, on that initial start, but it was the HP advantage over to Golden Guardians, and that's why they can just go for this immediate restart here. Here's the initial take where they're trying to go in here. It's the TP flank from Licorice that is just so well placed. Huhi goes over the wall. Berserker is having to cleanse. He's having to flash out. Kiting back. He's able to get this first kill, which was so critical, getting a lot of gold in his pockets. Yep, and then they're able to count out back here. Berserker gets one back. Sven dropping one more. But really, the picture in picture that we just saw during that replay showed an objective bounty being picked up by Cloud9 as well. So even on the recalls, they're trying their best to scavenge up some comeback gold. I have to say though, Berserker, while he is still behind Stixie, has caught up quite a bit. You know, he got that initial kill. Then we saw in the follow-up, he got a shutdown kill on Gory. He was able to push out all the waves top and they took the tier one. So he has his eye, he has his Gale Force. He's working towards that third item via PD or an LDR or whatever. Three items are already done on Stixie though. It's an MVP win condition. Either Berserker goes 200 years on a Felios, or the Golden Guardians will take this lead they've built and continue forcing forward. 
And one of the problems with being that single threat is Anathema's Chains is such a great answer, and Gory goes for that. He knows it has to be a Berserker to really make the difference in this game. So he's grabbing the Anathema Chain, strap that right onto him, and you can just walk straight at this guy as the Cassante in every single fight. Make his job a nightmare. You are armor stacked up, and he's doing reduced damage to you. And guess what? That Cassante has a Sejuani, Rakan, and Kennen, all with the same idea, looking for the backline, looking for the Aphelios with no flash. And the one champion you didn't name is a Zeri that is very fed as well. We're talking about Berserker as the hope for Cloud9, but his counterpart in Stixay, it's not like he's behind. It's not like he's He's irrelevant. It's not like he is not sitting on an awesome state here in this game. Golden Guardians continuing to siege up outside of this tier two in the bottom lane from C9. But with the wave broken and no minions nearby, they're going to disengage and head for soul points instead. Yeah, Cloud9 getting a little uh, sneaky there. MNS went, went mid to try and put some pressure, get some damage on the mid tower, uh, soften up one of those objective bounties. But there's no way Cloud9 can tango with a full five on five Golden Guardians. They are way too strong. So Golden Guardians will pick up Dragon number three, push themselves to soul point. Really, really, really dire game state still for C9, despite having been able to get a couple of kills there for Berserker, despite the fact that they were able to interfere with the Golden Guardian's plans to just rush down that Baron. It's still so tough. The front line for C9 is nowhere near as durable. It's Olaf with a Jack Show. It's Maokai with a Radiant Virtue. These guys are not strong enough to endure the damage from a Kennen, from a Zeri. When any sort of CC gets them locked down for a while, so everything from C9 has to be coordinated and it has to be clean. Absolutely, and they, they really need to find some way to take one of these dragons away to buy more time. There's so much armor stacking being done on the other side that's really going to negate a lot of what Berserker can do. MS thought he was just going to run at Licorice, start messing with him a little bit. Licorice wants to fight it back, but MS outplays him. River will move in to make it a one for one, but that was nicely done from an Orianna that was having a bad game. And again, every time you go even at this stage for Cloud9, it is a positive thing for you. So MNS there, just gonna get the flash plus the one for one kill trade, hugely beneficial. Ken and Flash is one of the biggest, scariest things that Berserker would have to worry about. And MNS just takes it out of the game. And if you can get MNS getting some gold here, that AP threat can become such a big deal because it is armor stacking on the other side. You can see Cloud9 just trying to donate the thumbs down of taking away the red buff. You can see they're trying to donate even their jungle camps over to Berserker. He got the Raptors, then they were trying to donate him the red. They're trying to just funnel everything into him to get this LDR complete because they know they're going to need it for that next fight. MNS here just coming around the corner, hits the initial QW, chunking him low, Licorice going in for that all in. But as soon as the ulti expires, the spells are on cooldown and Shockwave is still available. Yeah, I think Licorice had to flash that Shockwave. Yeah. I, I, he did not expect the damage. He did not respect the damage coming from MNS there. And he pays the price, losing his life and his flash. And this is what I'm talking about for Golden Guardians after they build these leads. You got to make sure you're not giving them away with silly small mistakes that can pile up. They still have a very commanding lead in this game, but Cloud9 have not given up just yet. LDR completed for the Aphelios. It's three full items for both AD carries. Yep, but jungle mid, you know, still a full item completion behind. Top lane is, is about even, so that's they've got that going for them. And even Huki is working his way towards Azonia, so really trying to go for that playmaking here. Now the Scuttle even being given to Berserker there. They really are feeling like Aphelios is their only way into this game. Honestly, I respect it. Yeah? You're, you're that far behind. The game went so awry early on. Relying on this Aphelios, relying on this hyper carry, relying on a guy like Berserker who you know has the hands to play it. But now Golden Guardians, they're going to find themselves in a fight. River's here in the front, gets caught up in the Maokai ulti. River does not have any Sejuani armor to protect him, but Licorice has teleported in. Now they're ready to find a pick back on the blabber. He dies before he can get to the safety of the Gory's lantern. Flanking. Now Gory's coming around from the side, and C9 may have been caught. Who he's killed? River is killed. Whoa! Thinks they might die. They're now doing they're it! By Gory isolated. Sticks in with a laser over the wall, as there goes the Cassante, and there goes Berserker. But C9 are still fighting a 3v3. Fudge gonna shut down. Licorice may just Another stop one! Him. Another oh! one! Under toe! Cloud 9 will not go quietly. 
Sven hit the death sentence onto who he's engaged. The Rakan went face first into Sven's hook. Popping off here, big, big play from the Cloud9 support to give his team a fighting chance in this fight. And just barely, they eke out the thousand gold shutdown there as Fudge on the Olaf chops down stick save. That was massive, and Fudge now just got another full item completed here. Plus he has the Elixir in pockets. We can see this one more time. Blabber going in, you know, does have that ultimate to set things up, but it's C9 that have to start cutting back. As soon as these area ultimate gets popped, they know they need to retreat. They need to try to reset that. Yeah, and they kill Blabber without having to use any big cooldowns. So they think, we're gonna win the game right now. They chase him over the wall. Look at this though, Huya goes in, into the death sentence, and immediately killed right there. Sven really on point. Then he hits Gory to lock in the other one. The front line's already down. Sticks a over the back wall. And then Fudge makes the turn here, charging right at this Zeri. So close. Yeah, and Sticks a was so close to popping off. Able to actually soften him up there, and then Fudge goes back in. But that fail flash from Berserker could have potentially kept him safe. And if Berserker could have stayed alive, they maybe could have turned that into even more because when you see a one fight over by the Baron, that can be game turning. Berserker getting killed meant the difference though and now it is back to live and it is back to soul. We're talking about game turning. This could determine a lot. Cloud9, once again, forced to fight over a neutral objective. Watch who he... Dragon at 4,000 HP. Who he could be a big playmaker here. Sejuani also having the ulti. Blabber fires out an Alkai ult. Oh, 23! By Blabber and Cloud9. River's gonna be focused down first, but he doesn't die just yet. Gory goes all out, and Fudge tries to disengage. Cloud9 have found the ability to stop this stack, and they kill the support at the same time. Blabber steals it, and MNS solos out who he. Will they be able to take more gold off the map at the same time as Cloud9 are slowly clawing their way back into this game that Golden Guardians have been dominating? I love playoffs here. 2023 LCS Spring has been a banger in North Carolina. That was 23 health left on that dragon, and Blabber gets it. Amazing resilience Baron. from C9 in game one. But now it's Golden Guardians who have to stop Look the Baron. Look at Licorice. Look at Licorice. C9's going for it. Gory's coming around from the side. It's Blabber with the smite again. Now Gory's in the middle. Whoa! Licorice with a massive Maelstrom. But it's not massive enough just yet. Berserker does die. But now Fudge is going to kill off the enemy Kassante. Licorice is down. Cloud9 just killed all of them. Cloud9 showing why they're the best team in the LCS, why they were ranked number one. They're gonna take that Baron and they're gonna take some towers. Licorice had the perfect angle there. Level 16 had the flash, had the ulti. They take down Berserker, but it's Fudge who was the Berserker in that fight. Olaf goes crazy and takes down Golden Guardians. Cloud9 now on the march. They secured the Baron. They got the bounty. They take down the tier two mid. They're pushing up top. They're looking to take everything. And Kobe, you called that out. It was 25 health or so on this smite steal. Cloud9, they, if you look at the, oh. the live play too, they have wiped off objective bounties with how much gold they've, they've come back in this game already. But look at this one. That was the dragon steal that set it all up. Cloud9, they avoid the very, very dangerous mountain soul point there for Golden Guardians. And then the transition over to Baron. They rush it down. Blabber hits another game-changing smite. And you think it looks pretty juicy there for Licorice as he goes in, but the Olaf is immune to CC. And he's taking heads. Yeah, the Olaf is just going crazy. They didn't have enough damage to burst them down. And it really feels like, because it is a two-threat team over on the Golden Guardian side, unless Dixie is staying safe and firing on that Olaf, there's just not enough damage in the tank to actually get it done. We go back about two minutes, Cloud9, maybe five minutes, Cloud9 were down about seven, 8,000 gold. They are now up 200, 300 gold here. This is a ridiculous comeback. We've been talking about 80 carry itemization points, how close they are. Fudge is now four completed items with the Maw, the Randuins, the Jack Show, the Ravenous Hydra. This Olaf is showing up in game number one as the bottom lane tier two falls and Cloud9 take a gold lead. They were down 10,000 gold almost earlier and now they're looking to crush the inhibitor line 
of the Golden Guardians. Licorice wants the angle for a flank, but remember he has no flash on the cannon anymore. These two cannon minions will be left to their own devices. Golden Guardians does not have the range to clear them away as Fudge just keeps River and Licorice occupied the side as the rest of C9 might just be ready to go. Licorice tries to attack, but he is picked instead. MS gets the kill. Licorice was a little too close. And by the time he realized it, he was they already end. gone. They want to end. Cloud9 wants the 5v4 to end this game. Nexus turrets under fire. Cannon minions blessed with Baron. First Nexus turret, half HP. Golden Guardians trying to scatter around and defend this base. They should be able to chase him off for one more wave, but here come the reinforcements. Teleport in for MS. It's like they instantly call the recall, though. Baron is timed out. Yeah, Baron timed out there, and they know Licorice is going to be back here pretty soon, so don't want to overstay their welcome. Uh, but it's another pick here, and this one's set up by Blabber. He knows there's no flash on the cannon. He just immediately flash twisted advance right on him as soon as he steps out of the base. They pile on to Licorice. They take him down. And River, that's... maybe a little bit of nerves getting to him there, accidentally throws out the ulti. That's not going to be up for Dragon. I mean, it's a short cooldown at this point, but that's not going to be available when the Dragon spawns. Tough, tough stop for the Golden Guardians. So far ahead. Such an impressive early game. And Cloud9 defended back to the point where they are now in charge. I just think back to that 1,000 gold shutdown killing Stixe when it was only 100 life left on both Fudge as well as MS. Gory goes in, looks for Fudge. He pops the ulti, he pops the ghost, he pops the flash, he gets out. Yeah, that is big though, getting all that off him because, you know, I talked so much about Berserker and how Cloud9 were putting all their gold into Berserker, but it has really been the Fudge show in this game, in those team fights. It has been about the Olaf. But who's now missing everything, and they're just going to push down top, try to trade for this, but the Dragon has been taken for free. Laver fires off that Maokai ult, but Stixe knows all he has to do is ride the wall through the longest part, and he can disengage. Yeah, Golden Guardian is trying to keep them in check. They've got super minions down bottom side that they have to deal with here. Licorice with his teleport, clean those ones off. They have a lot of breathing room here. A minute and 20 seconds left for this next objective. But Cloud9, as I was talking about in Champ Select, Maokai does so much for you when playing against a Kennen. Blabber can fill every brush with a sapling and then just mark the Kennen, make Licorice's job so difficult to get into the team fight to get back to Berserker. And at that point, they don't have assassination damage for this Ophelio. So Berserker is in prime condition to carry. He's almost full build. And I think for Gory, you know, you're building full armor, which made sense. You thought this game was going to end before MNS was relevant. But at this point, MNS is on four items here and is really getting scary. And there's almost no MR on Gory. It's just a little bit from his mythic. He has Frozen Heart, no HP, no MR. He has the Thornmail and Tabby. So this guy can really be punched through by the Orianna. MNS is Orianna. Remember, it was a tragic start for him this game. Oh, yeah. The lane swap, he got bullied, he got ganked, he got outplayed. But now, 5, 4, and 10. He's been a part of every kill except one. Now the fight's about to start with Gory tanking up here on the front. Has to flash away from Blabber's ulti as Golden Guardians disengage. Who he is cutting the wave mid, trying to look for maybe a flank angle here while Licorice split pushes bottom. Teleport and flash ready to join up. Yeah, I think Golden Guardians were trying to look for the really long play, but Licorice is going to continue to push. They want at least to force out the TP here. Baron has spawned. They're going to be immediately on it. They need the TP from Licorice to come through. He is coming now. They're going to get that teleport, but are they ready to deal with it? The Sejuani ulti goes way wide. Baron's at about 1,300. It's claimed by Berserker, and Gory's in the middle of Cloud9. Licorice coming in from behind, but he ain't going to find a lot of valuable targets because MNS is already back in the stasis. Licorice is down. Fudge runs away. Now they found a beautiful death sentence right back on the 6 A double kill over to Berserker. A triple kill over to Berserker. Golden Guardians are running to the wrong damn base. A nice death sentence from the wall from Sven, but Gory is the target for Fudge and MNS. MNS will chase him down, and there's that Orianna damage. There's the AP you didn't defend against, and there's another kill for MNS. Cloud9 have arrived in the finals, despite the early gold lead from the Golden Guardians, despite those overwhelming odds. C9 fight back. It was a crushing early game from the Golden Guardians, but an even more devastating comeback as Cloud9 take game one. What a
the start to the series here. Golden Guardians crushing the early game. Cloud9 trying to put all eggs in the Berserker basket as a potential for a comeback, but it does not end up being about Berserker. To me, this game was all about Fudge. This man completely ran over Golden Guardians in the team fights. While everyone is worried about Berserker, everyone's trying to focus Berserker, the Olaf was just going crazy. And if Zeri is pressured and Zeri is getting taken down, they had no more threats to really take him out. The Golden Guardians have awoken the sleeping giant that is Cloud9. The early game going all in their favor, yeah. picking up where they left off yesterday, but Cloud9 put a stop to it. Man, I, uh, the shutdown money, the objective bounty, bounty money doing a lot of work in this game. It was a crazy game one, but with it wrapped up, Viva la LCS! LCS in Espanol is the official Spanish language stream of the LCS. This new viewing experience is live on LLA's Twitch and YouTube channels right now. You can scan the QR code or go to lolesports.com to learn more. But with game one finished, with all the crazy curves and twists it turns it took, Banger. let's throw it back to the LCS lounge to break it down. Thank you so much, Captain Flowers. What a way to kick off the 2023 Spring LCS Finals. A comeback victory out of Cloud9. A hot start from Golden Guardians, but it just wasn't enough for them to get it over the finish line. Oh my god, I, I've been saying that. I didn't think, you know, Golden Guardians is going to keep pulling this off on red side, but they did it again. The flex picks coming through, giving them advantageous lane setups. C9 tried to match that with some swaps that didn't work well. Bot lane's going in their favor. It felt like everything was coming up Golden Guardians. Yeah, it started right here with this Huhi play. Wow. Huhi uh, and Stixay getting the better of Berserker. <laughs> <laughs> Not something we expected. And then C9 opted into swapping Ori top and uh, trying to get a better matchup, better matchups for their solo lanes. And I thought this was interesting. MNS was obviously a little bit more uncomfortable in the long lane. He did come back later on in the team fights, but it reminded me a lot of when I saw like Knight on JDG do this in 2020. They ended up losing that game. C9 obviously came back and win that, won this, but like every single time Golden Guardians go up against C9, they want they seem to want to target MNS. They tried to make him as uncomfortable as possible. River was up here consistently. Yeah, they bullied him. And Licorice gave him the tri-bush welcome. The classic after leashing, you walk towards your tri-bush and then get mm -hmm. auto-attacked with the attack speed boost on uh, Ken and E. So it was it was one of those moments where that, oh, right, there it is. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think there's definitely an element of the team that comes from the lower bracket yeah. having an edge when they play the Sunday match because they were just on the stage the day before. And I was all ready to say like, yeah, Cloud9, they're going to have to take that one on the the chin, come back. They just did it within the same game. Sure. They just managed to recover and get rid of that entire advantage. What an insane comeback. I mean, because that, that's a disastrous start, right? Early first blood, level one, bot lane, and then two kills going over early on the top side before level four of all things. Again, most people would be prepared to say, all right, done and dusted, move on to the next game, and it wasn't the case. C9 showed us why they're the number one seed here in the LCS because they found their fights around the global objectives. They bent but didn't ever break. They never yes. lost the sole point, the fact that Blabber was able to secure some of those. They never dived in front of the Baron pit <laughs> to give up like a massive oh, thing. Wow. So despite the eight, 9,000 gold advantage that Golden Guardians got. They never quite got the backbreaker, and eventually C9 scaling kicked in. Yeah, the smite secures were super important. Also, the team fighting from C9 was just so damn good. That was beautiful to see. Berserker was always put in safe positions. His positioning in team fights was just great. This one's a little tough. But another uh, highlight was Fudge. Fudge on his yeah, yeah. Olaf, I thought played incredibly well. There'll be a highlight you'll see immediately afterwards where it felt like he knew when to position. Uh, and then went to just flash all in and get the kill on towards Zeri. So they played patiently, they recognized they were in a deficit, and when they knew they were in an advantage a spot, they struck. Yeah, and at this point in the game, we're going to see C9 just continuously being able to take over these team fights. I think it was really crucial oh. that C9 were able to mitigate, especially when, if you remember when Golden Guardians ended up going for what their first. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you could go back. Like, I, just, I, mean, uh, I just say hook through the hourglass of who he, yeah. like it was perfectly timed to get Stixe and eliminate him in that fight. Uh, if you look at how, like there's this plateau oh. here, right? So like all of... Uh, Golden Guardian's first four turrets came between 1452 and 1716. Mm. They were not, once they actually were able to get Baron, which took two attempts, um, they, they weren't actually able to get a ton out of it. So you see right on that gold graph where it stalls out and all yeah. of these objective fights are happening and then C9 just take over. 
If that was the bend don't break that I was kind of referencing the fact that they never gave up that, that critical team fight. And for, for Golden Guardians, that is like as ideal of a start as you could hope yeah. for. Everything mm -hmm. went right. C9, this lane swap isn't working out for them. It, it looks terrible. And to, to lose this game. It's a backbreaker in game one almost? You, you would think it, so, except it hurts. just yesterday, they also had about a four or 5,000 gold lead against uh, FlyQuest yeah. in game one. They lost that game. They go blue side and they bounce back. This is a bigger throw or comeback, I guess you would say, but like uh, they have shown the mental resilience before. Yeah, the comeback is really impressive. It shows the caliber of their opponents that Cloud9 is as a team, that they don't yes. just get an early game lead like they've mm -hmm. had throughout the split. They're a team that can play smart, wait for those moments to strike, like I said earlier. And a, and a point that I wanted to make was just kind of pointing towards uh, just Golden Guardians kind of making mistakes within team fights. A lot of the times when they're going for objective setups, River's ultimately trying to focus down the objective. There was one time around Rift Herald where that happened while uh, the rest of Golden Guardians are taking the fight. And so when you lose those situations, that hurts because it's like, oh, are we committing to the turn or are we actually committing to burn? I feel like yeah. those are the things they need to iron out. Yeah, and I'm looking at Cloud9. They're not necessarily thrilled. Like, they kind of knew they got away with one, but they're yeah. still not happy mm -hmm. that they fell down. What I think was so interesting to me about their comeback is every individual had a standout play of some kind. Yes. yes. MNS had the bot lane solo kill against Licorice. Fudge had the triple kill team fight on Olaf. Berserker was just doing Berserker things, being nearly impossible to kill, getting 20 Ophelio Chakrams. Zven had the hook. Blabber had the two smite steals. Like, literally everyone had a big moment that you're like, oh, if that doesn't happen, the comeback doesn't work. So it it's a rare comeback. We're not going to see yes. one like that very often. And it was awesome to see this from C9 as well, because we focus so much on like, okay, they love playing around lane prio. They love to rely on their mechanics. They love to just like snowball you. But it was amazing to see, like you said, every single player on this team can carry at different times. And that's what makes them so formidable. Uh, it was a, a stellar game one, uh, back and forth, back and forth. What a comeback here from Cloud9. I'm sure uh, many of the fans in the arena were shaking in their boots. And I'm sure a couple special guests that we have here, Cloud9 fans themselves were shaking in their boots. We're gonna head over to meet them, it's Sapnap and Carl Jacobs. Oh, hey, it's to us. What's up, everybody? I'm hanging up on the highest level over the stage here. I've got Sapnap, I've got Carl Jacobs here doing some co-streaming of the LCS Finals. First time here at a Finals Live? Yeah, it's my first time. What about you, Carl? What about you? Yeah, I've never really had a camera in front of me like this. I'm actually, but hey, guys. Uh, bit of time since you were behind the camera. Now you spent a lot of time in front of it in a different way. Uh, big Cloud9 fan, though. What did you think of this game? Pretty big game. Cloud9 was in the lead the whole time. There was never a chance of them losing. Uh, really excited for that win. Big win for them. Uh, also, shout out Saikuno. <laughs> so, now, why is he trolling me and acting like he's nervous when we know damn well he's not nervous? No, he's nervous. He was telling me how scared he was before he came on here. You're so scared. <laughs> Let's go, Cloud9. Bring it home. I think y'all agree, though. It wasn't looking like Cloud9 for a bit, though. I saw you reacting when they were pulling over the victory. Tell me a bit how that was going and the reactions from your chat. We're on the screen. I mean, we're, we're on the screen over there. What? <laughs> I don't know if I've been trolled this much in an interview. Is this how he normally acts? This is Carl. <laughs> this is Carl. Any big takeaways from being here for your first finals and just how you became Cloud9 fans to begin with? That was just the team I started watching when I was younger, and I just stuck with them. Was part of it from when you were playing? I hear you have some diamond hands. <laughs> um, a little bit. I'm going to make you say more than two words at one time. In full effect, who do you think is going to win and why? You have to give me a why. Golden Guardians are going to bring it back, and then they're going to tie at the end, and there's going to be a big tie on the fifth game. <laughs> Good predictions. Two members of Mr. Beast's crew just beasting out. Oh, oh, wait, little, little appearance? Just little, little appearance? We have friends? Uh, Golden Guardians, 3-1. 3-1, easy as shit ever. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. I am with my buddy, Nick and Aerosmith. If he says that Golden Guardians is going to take it, they are. Yeah. Let's go. Hey, Saikuno, if you see this, hi. Please DM me. DM sent out. Oh, my goodness. Carl, Sam, now thank you so much for joining me. I'll, I'll let you all enjoy the rest of the show. For now, we're kicking it to a break. We got more LCS finals on the other side.
Red Bull gives you wings. Red Bull gives you wings. We have to tell everyone that we just switched to Verizon's new Welcome Unlimited plan for just $30. I've already told everyone. Wait, did you say Verizon for just $30? It's their best unlimited price ever. $30? That's awesome. Yeah, and it's from the most reliable 5G network in America. For $30 a line, I'm switching now. Yeah, it's easy. And you get $960 when you switch the whole family. Oh, wow. I gotta let my buddies know. We're already here. The network you want, the price you love, only from Verizon.